Jared Poland, Frono's Photo. Dot com and this is a hands-on preview of this brand new Olympus OMD E-M1X. Yep, there's lots of stuff involved with that. Now this is a $3,000 micro four-thirds top of the line camera from Olympus. Now Olympus brought me down by myself, Steven stayed at home working, to go to Orlando to shoot a bunch of different things to test out this camera in the real world. Now we didn't do a real world review or we can't call this a review at all because the camera had pre-production firmware, meaning it wasn't the final firmware and you can't call something a review if you're using pre-production firmware. Now what did we photograph down there? We photographed photographed NASCAR. We were at Daytona Speedway where we were hoping to get to drive cars, except for the fact that it rained all day and we only got to shoot a couple of cars going around the track a few times to test out the camera. Now, we also shot in the rain the next day when we shot some motocross. And finally, the last shoot that we had was at the University of Florida shooting an open practice where the football team was getting ready for one of their bowl games. Now, what's interesting about this is it was a second option because our first option fell through and we were also limited on which athletes we could photograph. So if we can't show you a picture of somebody's likeness, we may just put a logo over their face because I still want to show you sample images from that camera. Now some of you may be wondering when the Micro Four Thirds rumor sites put out a picture of some really handsome guy sitting on the sidelines looking at a camera that looks something like this, you're wondering, was, was that me? Was that Jared? No, that's just some really handsome guy. It doesn't look like me at all. So, yeah, no. I do want to let you know that this was the first time I was using an Olympus camera. The menu system is really different. Of course, with more use, you get more familiar with the menu system and where everything is. There's an option called the super something menu when you hit the OK button, which brings up everything on the back of the screen and you have access to it. So you kind of don't have to do a deep dive into the menu to get to everything. That's really cool that they have that option. But what I will tell you is that it's one of the most confusing menus of any of the major manufacturers' cameras, the Nikons, the Canons, and the Sonys. Now over time, you will get used to using it and that control panel thing is called the super control panel which was interesting and I will say that it was really confusing trying to figure out what silent mode was because usually there's like something that crosses it out and it's like a sign they put a heart there so once you realize that silent mode means heart uh, which you don't want your heart to be silent because then that means you're probably dead or Dick Cheney or both because you know, that was Dick Cheney, no, no heart, you people get that joke. Some of you guys get that joke. Uh, but let, let's talk about the body. This body feels really good in the hands. It feels better than the Sony A9. The ergonomics are really good. When you shoot vertical, your hand cups this thing perfectly. Your fingers go right to where the dials are and right where the buttons are, and you have access to everything really easy with everything being built right in. Now that means you can't take the vertical grip off. It's uh, dedicatedly built into this, which is kind of like my D5 or the 1DX Mark II. You also have two batteries that you're working with that will give you roughly 3,000 shots. Now I do want to say that for a micro four thirds camera, which is meant to be super small and super light to carry around, this is not much lighter or heavier than the A9. It's very similar. Now, of course their lenses are smaller and lighter, but you also are left with this dinky sensor on the inside. Yes, that is a dinky sensor. It is super small. And I know some people are gonna yell at me and say, oh, but it's small and you can get smaller, lighter lenses and travel. That's right. But with small sensors comes really crappy depth of field because it just isn't the same as using a full frame camera, especially knowing that this is a $3,000 camera. I'm gonna get into that more later on, but you have to know that because this is a top of the line camera, I'm gonna be much harsher on telling you what it was like using it and the things that I don't like. Of course, I'm gonna point out things that I do like, but I'm not going to do that just yet. This has a, oh actually I can, because it has a flip out rotatable screen, which most cameras should have in this day and age, that is a touch screen. But even though it has this option, the screen is about a million dots in resolution. It's terrible. 
And speaking of terrible, the electronic viewfinder in this camera is one of the worst pieces of garbage I've ever used on a mirrorless camera. Now I say that because it's not an OLED display. It's a 2.36 million dot LCD. It is old technology. Maybe four years ago it was a good LCD inside the viewfinder, but the problem is when you look through, you see all the lines. Now I'm not talking about scan lines. I'm like, you literally see the LCD screen, the lines of it, like when you don't have great resolution, even though it has 2.36 million dots. The blacks in the viewfinder look like light brown or, or just like a brown washed out. They just don't look good. So the EVF is terrible when you compare it to any, well, it's better than my D5 because my D5 doesn't have an EVF because that's old school. But comparing it to any of the newer EVFs and mirrorless cameras today, this is the worst one out there. I like the fact that the joystick now allows you to move the focusing points diagonally. So not just up, down, left, right, B, A, B, and select, start. You can now go, you know, on the diagonals, which is pretty cool for moving everything around. Weather sealing in this camera must be one of the best weather sealings I've ever seen in any camera. When you flip open this side door where there's two SD cards that are UHS-2, I might as well mention that while we're there, you can see the rubber gaskets. It's rated higher than the IPX1 standard. Now Olympus wouldn't go on the record and say that it could rate it higher, but they said most likely you can get much more out of it because they've tested it pretty thoroughly. You can take this thing into the shower and shoot with it. Just don't get the lens wet because then you'll have wet stuff on the front of the lens. Now let's jump into some of the high level specs of this camera. It's getting heavy for a micro four thirds camera because I don't have big guns. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put it down. We got a 20 megapixel live MOS sensor. Now think about 20 megapixels in a micro four thirds camera. My D5 is a 20 megapixel full frame camera. Which one do you think you're gonna get better results out of, cleaner images out of? But you've got 20 megapixels nonetheless in this camera with a micro four thirds sensor. But you do have dual processors in this camera, so it's better processing for quicker shooting. So it gives you the ability to do that. But keep in mind that the sensor in this camera is a retread sensor that's already been used in past cameras. So it's not a new sensor or a new technology that you're getting out of this. It's an older sensor that they put into it. Now in terms of ISO range, natively 200 to 6400 ISO with a max up in the not recommended area of 25,600. Now I shot some of the football practice at 4,000, 5,000 and 6,400 ISO and it doesn't look great. Now I'm at 1 800th of a second, 1 1,000th, 1 1,600th. I'm at higher shutter speeds because when you're shooting sports, you wanna freeze that action. At those higher ISOs, it doesn't look very good. It looks really amateurish, almost like a lower end DX camera from any of the other camera manufacturers could probably do better with higher ISO. It's really not that great. But what I will say is when you zoom in on the grain structure, the noise looks fine, the grain looks fine. It looks like actual film grain. But in this day and age to shoot at 5,000 ISO and have that amount of grain is not a good thing for a high end professional camera. Now let's talk about the autofocus points. Keep in mind that with a smaller sensor camera like this micro four thirds, you're not squeezing as many autofocusing points onto it as you would as if you had a full frame sensor. But there are 121 points. They're all cross type phase detect AF points, which is pretty good in this camera. When I used it to shoot the motocross, it did a fantastic job of tracking the subject, especially when you put on their algorithms that you could be like, oh, I'm photographing a motorcyclist. And it will do a very good job of tracking them continuously through the frame, which I think it did a very nice job of. Now, I also switched it off into different continuous focusing modes because I like to pick the focusing points myself and did a very good job of tracking the subjects. It did a good job of shooting the NASCARs and it did a good job of tracking the football players running down the field but it better do a good job. It's a professional high-end camera. I wanted to cut in here real quick and let you know that we just released 14 custom Lightroom presets. Check out the different looks you can get quickly by using presets like Black and White Boomify, Aquamarine, Sandlot, Color Boomify, Skittles, and more. Head on over to frontosphoto.com slash presets to play with and purchase all 14 of these presets at 40% off for a limited time. Now let's jump back to the video.
This camera offers you some interesting frame rate options because one of those is 60 frames a second, except it locks your AF and your exposure in on the first shot. But it could shoot 60 frames in a second of stills, which is gonna fill up your memory card quite a bit. It can do 18 frames a second with full AF in silent mode, which is pretty good, except for the fact that the Sony A9 does uh, 20 in full frame. That's a hell of a lot better. It also does between 10 and 15 frames a second with the mechanical. I shot in about 12 frames a second because I didn't need it to just overshoot because that's just way too many photos. I, I like to try to be economical with the shots that I'm taking, though these are all 12-bit compressed RAW files. Keep that in mind. They're really small RAW files that you end up getting out of this camera, so I guess you could squeeze a lot more onto a memory card if you were to go ahead and motor drive. Now, they did add something that's pretty interesting is that when your finger is pressed halfway down, it can record up to 35 shots before you actually press the shutter. So just in case something really cool happens and your camera so happened to be pointed that way and your finger was halfway down on the button, which is how I think it works, it is continually getting those 35 frames in a row. And then it probably throws them out when you don't press the shutter or it saves them and chews up more space on your memory card. One of the things that happens at these press events is that they bring you into a press room, they bring out some ambassador that they have to tell you how amazing this new camera is and I sit there and go, I'd rather just personally be shooting it to see it for myself. But they made a statement where they said in their shooting, their autofocus hit rate was around 90 and 95% with this new Olympus camera. And with a competitor's camera, it was 20 to 30%. Well, I chimed up right away and said, well, what camera was it? And they refused to answer it. So if you're gonna make a statement, you better be able to back it up. So if you say that you can hit 95% and the other camera hit 20 or 30, you better tell me what camera it was because what if it was something like a D3500 or if it was just user error? And on top of that, a lot of the material that they were showing in terms of the, the video footage samples that they were showing, didn't look extremely good. It didn't look cinematic. Now the reason is because the lack of depth of field that you get from the lenses. Now that brings up an interesting point. This is a 300 millimeter lens. When you put it on the front of this camera, you get a 600 millimeter equivalent. But as you can see from some of my motorcycle photos, the background doesn't blow out. That's what happens when you're using a micro four third sensor. Yes, you may be getting a 600 millimeter equivalent that is an F4 lens, but you're not getting the same effect as if you were shooting on a full frame body. The backgrounds become more prevalent. The same thing happens with their 70 to 200 2.8 equivalents. You don't blow the background out as much and then the images don't look as impressive. Now, before you jump on me in the comments for saying you said blown out, what I mean by blown out, the background being blown out, I'm talking about bokeh, the buttery smooth, you can't see what's in the background, it's not a distraction, I call it blown out, I'm not talking about the exposure, so that's just what I've always called it, blown out. Let's move on to something extremely positive and amazing in this camera. The five axis image stabilization gives you seven and a half stops of IS handheld. You can handhold with the certain paired lens, in this case, this 12 to 100 millimeter lens, gives you the ability to get seven and a half stops of handhold ability. You could handhold a shot for like four seconds, for 10 seconds. You could even challenge yourself. Some people said they were up in 20 seconds handheld, shooting, of course, a subject that's not moving, and they still got a great shot that was stable. When you shoot video with this camera, the stability is incredible. We still need to do more tests with the final firmware now that we have that in this camera, but it is almost like using a gimbal. I haven't seen stability like this in any camera up until this point. That is one amazing feature. Now, if you're just using the regular lens, you'll get seven stops, not seven and a half. One thing we did notice with the image stabilization of this camera is that it may be a a little bit wobbly or warpy, so that's something to keep in mind. Here's an interesting feature that the Olympus people were saying was really cool. 
that you can handhold because you have the stability of this camera with the IBIS to get a, they call it a high res shot mode for handheld. It will give you, get, get this, 50 megapixel image. What it's doing is in the camera, it's taking four RAW files and it's combining it in the camera. You could also do it with the software after the fact, but most people will bake it in. But you also lose use of the camera when you're doing that. Now I just say if you want to get 50 megapixels, get a Z7. It's 47 point some megapixels and you don't have to wait. You can just keep taking pictures. So that is not a selling point. For those of you interested in the video features, it gives you DCI and UHD 4K, but it is in IPB compression. But it does have that great image stabilization, so don't you forget about that. Now, when I was shooting motocross, testing out the video features, just hand holding it, it was really easy to use. I just flicked into video mode and I started to shoot and that image stabilization kicked in and it's really surprising how well it does when you're shooting video. Like most professional cameras out there, you have the ability to shoot 1080p at 120 frames per second. It's nice to have the option to do that slow motion to give you some of that cinematic look that you may be looking for, but keep in mind with the lack of depth of field, it becomes much harder to get that cinematic look that you can get with a full frame camera. Like I said earlier in this video, this is a $3,000 micro four third censored camera. If you're looking for it, it will be available in February, but we gotta get real here and talk about who is this camera for? And the answer is, I don't know. I don't think anybody new in the world is gonna be like, that camera blows my socks off and I want a micro four third sensor. Yes, I am a hater of micro four third sensors because I like shooting at higher ISOs, but even shooting at lower ISOs, the quality isn't as good in this camera as you're gonna get from the other professional cameras on the market. Now it's less expensive than the D5, than the 1DX Mark II and the Sony A9. The Sony A9 is only 1500 bucks more for a full frame camera. Will people that already own Olympus Glass think that this is a great upgrade, that they need to purchase this? That's possible, but I really can't see too many professional photographers using this. Now, some of the reasoning that the Olympus Pros gave us on this trip for using the Olympus system is that the lenses are lighter and smaller and they can carry more of them around when they're running down the sidelines or hiking. And I get that. You get something that's lighter and smaller, but this body is much heavier and larger than the other Olympus cameras that are out there. And for me, the trade-off for the crappy depth of field that you get, because you don't get that compression, even though you get those, you get more bang for your buck with the lenses, you don't get that depth of field that makes your images just look professional. It's that simple. It just doesn't look professional when the background isn't blown out in most of your images. You could look at something like a Z6, or an A7 III from Sony, they're $2,000, they're full frame. I get it that this is a, you can, you can get more lenses because they're smaller and lighter and travel with them, but as a full-time professional photographer, because this is geared towards a professional photographer, I can't see 1% of the world using this camera or having a need for it. Olympus did a great job with some of the tech in this camera. Some of it is mind blowing and would be really cool to find in other cameras from Nikon, Canon and Sony. But some of the stuff in this camera just leaves you shaking your head. The EVF quality is so bad that I don't even want to use the camera just because of how bad the EVF is. Professional camera, $3,000. We have to look at it as if it's a pro camera. At the end of the day, I mean, I'm not switching to this. We know that, I'm a, I'm a Nikon shooter, I use D5s, but we have an A9 and we use 1DX Mark IIs when we need to get them in. At the end of the day, if I was told that this is the only camera I could use on a photo shoot, could I get good results? Absolutely. You should be able to get good results with any camera that you put in your hands, even if it's a micro four thirds camera. Now keep in mind, all of the sample images that I captured, and you can download those raw files, are from a pre-production firmware. So that's why we don't call this a review. If we decide to test it out more, we'll put together a review at another time, but I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. Leave some comments. Don't forget to like, share, and comment, and subscribe. And that's where I'll leave it. Thank you very much for watching. Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. See ya.